awaits His Excellency's speech. The calisthenics display by the students of Bishop Phillips Academy will go hand in hand with His Excellency's Please spread out. Spread out. Sure. Your hands by your sides, please. Your hands by your sides. I want more lay with them. Oh, yeah. Like this, please. Bishop Phillips Academy. Your hand on your front, uh, the person before in front of you. Put your hand on the soldier next to you. On the next, uh, on the next soldier, please. Are we ready? Are we side? Left, 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 right, left, right, left, right. Pray hot. One, two, ready, go. Slowly. Bishop Phillips Academy on calisthenics display. And please. Slowly. We are giving you just a minute because His Excellency is about to give his address, please. Oh, my Bishop, Acad Bishop Phillips Academy. Gently. Talk before me now. Gently. He be talking back. Oh, Danny, yeah, oh. I say, oh, I say, oh. Go me now, what they saw about you, oh. Ejak baru aku kosong, orang dulu nafas tadi bapa i. Thank you, thank you. Esok buka. Go. Esok ayam malay we. Bishop Phillips Akek. Before I'll go into my main speech, I want to first of all apologize to our very important personalities. The arrangement, the sitting arrangement should have been done better. So on behalf of the committee started with that responsibility, we failed you, but I take responsibility for it and I sincerely apologize. Our Excellency, wife of the Governor of Oyo State, Mrs. Tamuno Minini Makinde. His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Oyo State, Engineer Rauf Aderemi Olaniyo. Our Excellency, wife of the Deputy Governor of Oyo State, Aliaja Amidat Alania. Your Excellencies, former governors and former deputy governors here present. The Speaker of your State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Olagunju Ojo, and members of your State House of Assembly. The Chief Judge of Oyo State, Justice Muntia Abibola, and all the judges here present. The Head of Service, Alaja Amidat Ololade Agwala. Members of the National Assembly here present. You and others, sir. Uh, 
His Imperial Majesty, the Olubada of Ibadan Land, Obasaliu Akamu Adetiji. His Imperial Majesty, the Alafi of Oyo, Oba Lamidi Olaiwala Adeyemi the Third. His Imperial Majesty, Shaun of Ogomosho Land, Oba Jimo Oyewumi, ably represented by High Chief Samuel Otolori. The representative of Oba of Bini, I Chief Edobo and his wife. All the Yoruba elders here present, I greet you. All the service commanders here present, I greet you also. Members of the international community and the diplomats here present, I also greet you. Captains of industries, head of government agencies, and parastators, I greet you. I want to single out for special greeting Ambassador of Nigeria to Botswana, who came in with a delegation from Botswana Ambassador Omar, I greet you. Also, special recognition to Dr. Kes Lawa. He is a true son of the soil. I greet you. The good people of Oyo State, my Lord, spiritual and temporal. Distinguished guests, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Ajishebi Oyola Ari. Benny, Oyo Shebi Baba and Nikoka. Oyo leads and others imitate. We're a state proud of our many firsts. In 1965, just five years after Nigeria's independence, the first skyscraper was built in the western region, in the area that later became part of our beloved Oyo state. Well before independence, this same territory hosted the first TV station in Nigeria. The first university the first housing estate in Nigeria, the first government secretariat, and the first modern parliament. Let me also add that we host the first stadium in Africa, and this is where we are all gathered today. The first dual carriage road, and more recently, the first private TV station in Nigeria. Reflecting on this first makes you realize that there must be something special about this region. The legendary of your greatness, the Peseta State lives on. I am greatly honored to stand before you today to assume the overwhelming mandate you have given me. This inaugural address will not dwell on the past, but look to the future because of the urgency and the magnitude of the task ahead of us. We want all of you to be a part of the implementation as we work together to move our state forward. We may make decisions that are sometimes uncomfortable, but we will try our best to always be just, fair, and act with the fear of God. 
I am here as your governor to serve you. I will work tirelessly and take responsibility for the workings of every sector. While I will delegate effectively, the buck will stop with me. I want you to hold me accountable, and I will also hold you accountable as we work as partners to bring Oyo State to glory. We will be a progressive administration building on the programs of past administrations that were structured properly and have been beneficial to the masses. When the need arises, we will even consult our predecessors and draw on their experiences. We will put aside partisan politics for the good of our state. We will bring in new ideas and explore new initiatives. We will partner with local and foreign investors, some of whom are here with us today. I was drawn into politics because I saw the way the world meant for everyone was being siphoned by a few to enrich themselves while leaving the masses in desperate poverty and dehumanizing suffering, and our land in ruin. We have an opportunity to change this, and by the grace of God, we will. With good governance, we will more than confront poverty. We will usher in an era of progress and prosperity. To do this, I speak to your consciences. We have to shun the way things are currently done. Every one of us, in every walk of life, must embrace accountability and hard work. I promise the Nigerian Labor Congress, during all our meetings, that our relationship will deal with issues openly and sincerely, because we're all in this together. We have already started working on our campaign promises in the area of investments. We promise that our administration will be pro-private investments, that we will make our state the preferred investment destination in Nigeria. We recognize that one of the areas of comparative advantage is agriculture. I'm excited to tell you today that we have already taken steps to market our potentials. Our farmers will be happy to know that we're in talks with Botswana to export our maize to them. Our African neighbors have in recent past imported from Central America, but they are ready to give us a chance. So we welcome the delegation from Botswana, led by Business Botswana President, Gobosong Kebini. During our campaign, as we move from one local government to the other, we listen to people discuss their concerns. I know that the people of Oyo State are not asking for too much. We spoke to the businessmen who are hurting under multiple taxations, who are paying because the ease of doing business is so bad that Oyo State ranks 35 out of 36 states in Nigeria. More businesses are shutting down than are being opened. We spoke to farmers in settlements at Ipapo, Ilora, Irua, Ogumosho, Iresadu, Ijaye, Akufo, and Lalupa, who complained about inability to access credit facilities, poor rural infrastructure, especially the feeder roads, difficulty in processing their harvest, and lack of storage facilities. 
we listening to leaders and members of the Joint Farmers Association and agropreneurs talk about the challenges in the agricultural sector and provide solutions which we will implement. Our administration will make providing infrastructure a priority. We spoke, to, we spoke with parents of children in public secondary schools who, are out, who out of their meager resources still have to scrunch 3,000 naira per child so that their children can get an education and increase their opportunities. Our region that has the first university in Nigeria now has a state with the seventh highest number of out-of-school children. Over 400,000 children in Oyo State are out of school. Effective immediately, the school fees of 3,000 Naira in state-owned secondary schools is hereby abolished. We want enrollment to go up. We want our children have the streets, and we want them in the classrooms. We're throwing the school doors wide open. Whoever opens a school door opens an opportunity. We're opening opportunities for a brighter future. We also know that education standards in Oyo State are poor. Oyo State recently ranked 26 in Nigeria in WAEC performance. While we invite the students to come in, we will focus on raising the standard of education in Oyo State. We will work on providing needed infrastructure and manpower by increasing Oyo State's education budget to 10% of our total annual budget. This will increase yearly until we match UNESCO's recommended standard of 15 to 20 percent. We will be a pace setter state in education. We know that quality education is not possible without quality teachers. Quality emoluments and benefits attract quality teachers. We're not ignorant of the plight of our dear teachers. Of course, my own father used to be one of you. We know that the state of the teachers' pension scheme. During my campaign, I made a promise which today I will fulfill. I promise to donate my entire salary as governor to the teacher's pension fund. I stand by that promise. We will seek practical ways to reposition the Lado Akintola University of Technology, Obumasha, You are aware that the university is jointly owned by Oshun and Oyo State. We will reach out to our sister states and share ideas on how to move the institution forward. However, our priority is a total takeover. We spoke with people living with disabilities. Successive governments have not paid, ad, paid adequate attention to our people who live with disabilities. We talked about the challenges and neglects they face. The lack of access to health care, education, work opportunities, and stigmatization. 
to people living with disabilities in our state, I say to you, your relief has come. We will establish a commission for people living with disabilities. The mandate of this parastata will be to improve the lives of people living with disabilities. In addition, we will develop an institutional framework for enforcing compliance with our equal opportunity principle. We will also encourage the private sector to hire persons with disabilities by offering them tax incentives. We spoke with people facing health challenges. We're planning interventions in this sector under two main headings, providing primary health care and making health insurance more accessible to the people of our state. Access to good health care is non-negotiable. Non it is the responsibility of government to ensure there are adequate medical and health care facilities for all persons. Therefore, in the first two years of our administration, no new health care center will be built. The focus will be to upgrade the existing ones by renovating and equipping them. In the same vein, our strategy for implementing the health insurance scheme will involve updating existing interventions and making them more accessible. By November of this year, we will have completed a needs assessment and identified local associations willing to participate in the health insurance scheme and use them to get insurance benefits to the most vulnerable in our state. We will also embark on extensive reformation of the hospital management board for more effective service delivery in our hospitals. The biggest issue facing the people of our state is poverty. We need money to confront poverty. Our state needs money. Right now, our state income stands at 33% from internally generated revenue and over 60% FAC allocations. And this is why we're constantly in a cycle of debt and liability. The model is unsustainable. It has to change. We will reduce government overheads, increase the efficiency in tax collection, simplify the tax payment system, and cut down on debt accumulation without concrete repayment plans. However, we cannot do this without your support. So I'm taking this opportunity to solicit your support. We're going to be taking decisions that may be tough in the immediate, but will have long-term benefits. We want you to look at the big picture. We want you to focus on the goal. For example, I've always said that Oyo State civil servants deserve to earn a whole lot more for their dedication and service to the state. Recently, the federal government announced a new, salary, a new salary scheme in which the lowest cadre of civil servants are expected to earn at least 30,000 Naira. I know how access to this type of money will improve the lives of many of the families that I have had direct contact with. However, with the way the Oyo State account currently stands, I'll be deceiving you if I said we're cap capable of taking on this body right now. I believe in true federalism. I believe the state should decide the minimum wage of their workforce based on individual realities. All states are not created equal, so it is against the principle of fairness to apply a blanket rule to govern them all. 
That being said, our plan is to make Oyo State the first state to pay above the national minimum wage. We know this is possible. We have already set our plan in motion to make this possible. But this requires time. We propose staggered increments. I met with organized labor during my campaign, and I made a pledge to an open relationship. I intend to stand by that promise. We will have a sincere conversation and arrive at the best possible decision. You should be rest assured that the decision will put your overall best interest first. We will set up a committee in due course to look into all cases of those who believe they have been wrongly dismissed from the civil service, including those whose cases have been decided in their favor in court who have not been reinstated. We have interacted with students, workers, artisans, young and elderly people. The story is the same. Everyone wants something better. Our focus as a government will be to implement policies which will give our people the tools they need to lift themselves out of grinding poverty and lack. We publish our roadmap for accelerated development, 2019 to 2023, three months before the elections. We want you to hold us to our promises as contained in that document. In that document, we set forth our policies for tackling the infrastructure deficit, enabling an efficient health sector, improving security, youth empowerment, social inclusion, and protection. Our policies reflect an understanding of the magnitude of problems or your state people face and our determination to use the instrument of focused leadership to tackle them. We're not promising miracles. We promise that results will happen if we work together and that you will see the results, some in a matter of weeks. I cannot hand this address without expressing my gratitude to God and the good people of Oyo State. The leaders and members of our great party, the PDP, as well as the coalition of parties, ADC, SDP, ZLP, and some members of ADP, who worked together to ensure we were successful. I also thank members of my campaign organization, including volunteers all over your state, who believe in our vision and work tirelessly to achieve success. I greet my darling wife, Ominini. You've been a pillar of support, so I thank you so much. Well, I also thank my children. I thank you, uh, Feyi, Toby, and Tayo. You've had to endure so much while I was on the campaign trail. As I promised in my open letter to the people of Oyo State in December 2018, I, Sheyima Kinde, will be the people's governor. I will run an all-inclusive government for the benefit of everyone in our dear state regardless of tribe, religion, social class, or political affiliation. And by this, the overhead bridge linking to Secretariat, from this moment will be called the Freedom Bridge. It is going to be open to everybody, not just 
or your state governor and his wife alone. No, it is for all the people of your state going to the state secretariat to use from this point forward. I believe that being a leader should not be seen as a leeway to dominate and dictate, but as a privilege and opportunity to serve, leaving a lasting legacy of positive change and continued growth. Oyo State is the pace setter state. We are determined to continue setting the pace. We are poised to continue moving forward by focusing on the right priorities. As governor, my duty is to create opportunities for all of your state citizens, regardless of where they live, and that starts with education and jobs. A good job and a great education are not rural or urban issues. They are of your state issues. As governor, I will not rest until good jobs thriving businesses and quality education are the standard in Oyo State. Together we can do this. I promise Omitutu, it is now time to experience it. So don't be surprised if after we leave the stadium, the heaven decides to open up for showers of blessing. I also use this opportunity to thank my two mothers, Madam Abigail Makinde and also Mrs. Victoria Alo. You raised me and you've been a very strong influence on me. I thank you. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Long live all your state. Thank you all, and God bless you. All right, Papa, let me engineer.